Last Halloween, I went on a journey around northern New Jersey, one of the densest places in North America with regards to folklore, urban legends, ghosts, you name it. I was kind of following the guidance of Weird New Jersey magazine. It's a famous zine that's been published by Mike Moran and Mark Skirman since it started all the way back in 1989. It chronicled user-submitted claims of devils and murderers and small towns built for little people that actually kind of turned out to be true. A couple key spots captivated me, namely the albino cannibals of Booton, Hoppy the Lake Monster and Lake Kong and the infamous Clinton Road. I wanted to find the cannibals because I live in Booton, I got to record my first album right out on Lake Kong, and Clinton Road just seems like way too cool to miss out on. So I made a whole day trip out of it. I had my copy of Weird New Jersey in hand, I was gonna make a vlog out of this whole thing. Last summer I moved to New Jersey, basically to pursue music and that sort of deal because this is just where you go when you're making alternative stuff. And one of the coolest things about this state is the culture. There is so much history and urban legends, stories everywhere. There's a lot of kooky, weird stuff. Today's Halloween, so I figured it'd be kind of neat to go on a little mini road trip and explore some of the cooler, creepier sides of this state. I made my way into town, did some casual trespassing, and I began my search. So what Booton is known for is apparently there is a tribe of small albino cannibals out here that will pull you from your car, drag you into the woods, and eat you. And this is like the neck of the woods where that sort of thing would happen. I wandered through some of the forests, walked by the river, clapped my hands, chirped for them. No luck, no avail. Like, if you want to find an albino cannibal, you have to think like one, you know? If I was an albino cannibal out in the woods, I'd want to go somewhere pretty, nice. There's some shelter nearby. Uh, a lot of hikers come down here poking around. It's a nice local tourist spot. Where are the cannibals? I made my way out and continued down this little nature trail. I found some vandalism left by some troublesome local youth. I wonder if Alex and that other person broke up. I followed the trail a little further and I found these super cute exhaust tunnels for the old iron facilities in town. They would force have been blocked off, but that doesn't stop local kids from coming out here, writing their names on the walls and stuff. I mean, it's, it's illegal and it's not cool to do, but Something about the humanity of dumb teenage spray paint, I, I dig it. It makes a place feel lived in and soulful. I continue my search and, oh, I found one. Cool. I went back to town, got some coffee at a really cute spot, and then I walked back to my car. It was really cool seeing trick-or-treaters out and about. That made me very happy. All my homies hate trunk-or-treating. Let your kids run wild on the streets like in the good old days. Worth noting, by the way, Roma Pizza in Booton, New Jersey is my favorite pizza in the world. Big recommendation. Got my car with the books in hand, and I took off for Lake Hapatcong. Next stop is Hoppy. Allegedly, it has the body of a serpent and the head of a dog, like... This photo is from the New Jersey government, allegedly, so that's how you know it's real. As recently as 2014, there have been actual sightings of serpents in the lake, i.e. a legit escaped 16-foot anaconda. Its head was, you know, it was flat, but I mean, you can kind of see that thing was probably as big as my hand. Nothing was ever officially confirmed that it actually existed, but these people were really passionate about it still. I pulled up to a random little spot on Lake Hapatcong, say, Barbershop Studios. I found some docks and I walked around them. I felt the old wood sway under my feet. It was precarious for sure, but not due to any lake monsters or anacondas. I was getting bored, a little tired, so I noticed that there was a restaurant with alcohol inside, so I popped inside to grab a cheap beer. I got to talk to the bartender while we were hanging out. Do you know anything weird around here? I'm... Is anything weird? This whole town is weird. It's a pretty weird place. Almost like Twin Peaks. Did you did you see Hoppy? The water's lower. No sightings? shy, I guess. I chat with some of the bar patrons and they were way more educated on weird histories of the area, which was super cool to hear. I mean, this town always burned down. Burned like, down? Like a hundred years ago. This is supposed to be like Coney Island West. And it was a summer place for people from Manhattan. When everybody left their kerosene lamps on, they'd go back. Wait. In the summer, and this whole side of the lake burn down. Like that. After chatting for like half an hour, had a really good time, I headed out to make my final trek to the crowning jewel of the day, Clinton Road. A little history lesson on the area. Clinton Road is located in West Milford, New Jersey. It is 10 miles of fairly desolate nothingness. There are very few streetlights, driveways are tucked away in the trees, and there are many places where you can just pull off on the side of the road, hold your hands in front of your face, and see absolutely nothing given how dark your surroundings are. Well, for over 100 years, this area has been notorious for strange happenings. There were rumors of robbers, counterfeiters, witches, ghosts. Those rumors eventually evolved to include devil worshippers 
and serial killers. By far, the most famous landmark of Clinton Road is Cross Castle. It was constructed in 1905 by one Richard Cross, and it resembled, well, a castle. It caught fire in 1940 and was left a husk of its old self with all the wood elements destroyed with only the charred ruins left behind. It became a hotspot for urban legends amongst local youth who would explore the ruins and make up stories. Kids would whisper about bodies being discovered in the destroyed basements, ritualistically killed animal carcasses found littering the property, and satanic vandalism eventually covered the walls left behind. There are dozens of fanciful stories and tales you can find online and local records that describe KKK meetings, strange figures, ominous rituals at Cross Castle. The city of Newark actually purchased the property in 1988 and they demolished Cross Castle and converted it into a watershed holding. There's also stories of large animals that are prevalent as well, claims of giant lone wolves with glowing eyes, floating dogs that will chase after your car. People have apparently seen monkeys in the trees, hellhounds patrolling the roadsides, and even the Jersey Devil himself apparently makes vacations out of the Pine Barrens and heads up north from time to time. Clinton Road is very well known for its ghostly activity. My favorite spirit is the young boy on the bridge who collects and returns coins thrown into Mossman Creek down below. There are tons of pennies and coins and nickels sitting amongst the rocks below the water tossed in by locals and tourists feeding the local myth. Some say he politely leaves coins that he fishes out of the creek, while others say that he will just throw your coins right back at you immediately after you drop them. Another popular story involves a woman hitting a concrete barrier and dying while driving a blue 1988 Chevy Camaro. Allegedly, if you tell the story while you're driving down Clinton Road, her vehicle will appear. One of the key explanations people have for why the area is so spooky kind of involves the mafia. Allegedly, New York mobsters would whack somebody, bring their remains down to Clinton Road, it's isolated, it's close to the state border, and it would confuse local jurisdictions when they tried to investigate. It's a perfect crime. And there's a certain shred of truth to this. In 1983, the body of Daniel Deppner was discovered while a bicyclist was out on Clinton. He was murdered by one Richard Kuklinski, a serial killer heavily involved in organized crime. He was called the Iceman because he froze the body of one of his victims to hide the time of death. Speaking from experience, Clinton Road is crazy. Driving down is pretty incredible. If nothing else, the scenery is stunning and the vibes are immaculate, but I'll tell you what, there were no floating dogs or Satanists or ghosts. Just leaves, trees, and not a single other vehicle on the road, which struck me as strange. I stepped out of my car to poke around a few times. My caveman brain absolutely got spooked a few times. Not on the basis of any supernatural beings, but rather because it was dark and ominous and a forest. I'm unfamiliar with it. Right as I was done and ready to head home for the night, something weird happened. A pickup truck appeared. It was the first vehicle that I'd seen all night. They immediately pulled over on the side of the road when they saw me. Like, they've been driving all night, they can park anywhere, and they picked the spot up the road from me. I kind of watched with my flashlight as they popped out of their truck. I could see the cab light. Two dudes popped out with their flashlights and they began walking towards me. The only people I've seen all night and they're walking my way. I even called out to them. Howdy! No response, so I got the H-E double hell no out of there and put my phone down. You know how in found footage horror movies, the main characters always point the camera at the monster so you can see what's chasing them? And you're yelling at the screen going, dude, why are you recording right now? I can tell you, I would be a far more believable protagonist because I quit filming and I just focused on getting out of there. Unfortunately, you're just gonna have to take my word when I tell you that they got back in their vehicle and they proceeded to chase me out of Clinton Road. I was doing 55 and a 35 and they were still riding my bumper the whole way through. I reached the end of the road, pulled immediately into a gas station right outside, and I called my dad. I like to end my videos with some kind of message, theme, takeaway, etc. When thinking about last Halloween, I can't help but feel infatuated with humanity as a whole, if that makes any sense. I think there's something like cute about people making up stories about the places they live to make them more interesting. I think it's cute that people care enough to archive and record those stories. I think it's cute that people will go out of their way to terrify each other and keep those legends alive. Do I personally believe that the woods have albino cannibals? That there is some dog-headed lake monster in Lake Hepatcong? The Clinton Road is home to an assortment of haunts and horrors? Not really, no. But going out of my way to explore the area, meet new people, see the little undeniable signs of humanity peeking through, it's cool to imagine the people here, the little stories they're finding themselves in the middle of, and it was super neat to have a spooky fun backdrop to all of this. 
And I think that's the reason we have stuff like urban legends, myths, tall tales. These are the things that make places feel lived in. Luxury apartment developments only wish they had charm like these places. Have a happy Halloween, delightful spooky season, stay spicy. I'll see you next time.